Giants lose on Thursday night football, 30-12 to to the San Francisco 49ers. And this wasn't really much of a surprise the way that this game turned out. Giants hung around. I, I, you know, I guess they, you know, they were in this for, for a bit. Never had the lead. Uh, we're always trailing. and uh, But the Niners are just on, a, on another class. Um, you know, as we've seen, you know, the Giants are just not going to be able to compete with the likes of the Niners, the Cowboys, the Eagles. Just not going to happen for many, many reasons. Uh, and look, for the Giants, there were injuries. Uh, no Saquon Barkley. No Andrew Thomas. No Aziz Ojolari. Uh, I think there's another one. Uh, ben Bredesen. Those come to mind among maybe some others, but those are the big ones. So you have that, but even if those guys played, it wouldn't have changed the result of, of the game. You know, the, the Niners, from a yardage standpoint, I mean, uh, major, major difference. Uh, one of the biggest margins of yard difference in football in the last couple of seasons. 441 total yards for the Niners, 150 for the Giants. First downs, 26-10 to 10 Niners. Time of possession. Oh, you know, 39 minutes to 21 minutes. I mean, the, again, the Niners had the ball for almost two-thirds of the game. Giants, another game where the Giants don't record a turnover. And, you know, third down conversions were key. I think it was 7 for 10 at halftime. It ends up 9 for 16 for San Francisco. But... You know, the Giants, and not, not only were these third downs, but they were key third downs and long ones. Third and 14, uh, third and 15, third and 13. You know, extending drives and, you know, just little little screenplays. You know, you know, McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk was out for San Francisco, and he's a pretty key part of their offense. He didn't even play. And Wink Mardell blitzed the fuck out of Brock Purdy. And it's all they could do. It was the only chance they had. You know, um, they blitzed a lot. And Purdy, honestly, I was not really that impressed with Brock Purdy. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, obviously he's got a lot around him and probably some of the best skill position players in football, you know, a really good offensive line. And, you know, again, like on defense, it was bad. It, it, the Giants defense was bad. I mean, all facets were not good. But all that being said, the Giants were kind of hanging in there. You know, they they were a two-point conversion away in the third quarter from being down three. They they then had the ball down eight in the third quarter. But ultimately, the, the San Francisco Niners, uh, San Francisco 49ers outclassed the New York Giants because there is a massive, massive difference in talent. And as far as injuries coming out of this game, Deontay Banks, um, I think he was need in his, I think, upper arm, I think he said. So, we'll see. It doesn't seem like it's anything overly concerning. And, of course, the Giants won't be playing again until um, next Monday night. So, they have a little bit of a break here where they stayed out west. They went from Arizona to San Francisco. Now, they'll be playing another NFC West team in the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm just going to stay straight out. I'm going to call that another must-win game. Just like I said, the Arizona game was must-win, and they won it. I think the Seattle game is as well, considering the fact that you then have at Miami and at Buffalo on deck – at the Seahawks game, I think that is a that's a really really big game in terms of the NFC wild card landscape. And I, you know, because look, you're not going to win the division. The Giants are not going to win the division, so you you then set your sights on the wild card. I know it's early in the season, and so it's a bit premature. But Seattle will very likely be in that conversation. And the Giants lost there last year. That that to me is a big big game as far as where the rest of the season goes. I think if you lose that game, I think that the season could go off the rails a bit. But if you win it, I think. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think that there's reason to believe that you can make something happen for this season. But, you know, it, it certainly didn't help, obviously, like I said, to not have Andrew Thomas, to not have Saquon Barkley. Let's talk about some of the roster decisions. You know, you have O'Shane Zimenez promoted from the practice squad and Jalen Thomas, uh, I think Jalen Thomas, I believe it was, um, who's a depth offensive lineman. I don't, I don't believe he got in the game. And so Taiwan Jones, a special teamer who had been elevated the last two games, was not in this one. The three healthy scratches were Cordell Flott, which is interesting. Darnay Holmes played this game and, and had some good moments, had some bad moments. But Flott was the scratch. Javarius Owens was the scratch, which was not a surprise. Then also Jordan Riley was again a scratch. So DJ Davidson played over Riley. D Davidson left the game with an injury as well. He also had some... I think he had a half a sack, actually. 
So the Giants finally get a... The Giants got two sacks in this game. They had not had any sacks going into this game. Still no turnovers, like I mentioned. But, um, yeah, so those, you know, not that many healthy scratches considering that you have, you know, some injured players who are not on IR. But, you know, I, I guess I'll... T- I guess I'll, I'll, I'll discuss some individual stuff, and then we'll go into the play-by-play. But, you know, Daniel Jones was not great, but, like, it just didn't matter. You know, the, the offensive line held up at points, certainly didn't at other points. There was a really bad play where I don't know what Brian Dable and Mike Kafka were thinking about in terms of Nick Bosa just coming in clean for what was almost a safety where Daniel Bellinger... Really, you know, where he was positioned, it was going to be almost impossible to stop Bosa. I just don't understand what that was about. Um, it did not work out. They were basically hoping that Bosa wasn't going to read it correctly. He did, and he got home easily. But Daniel Jones missed a couple of throws. You know, the connection between him and Darren Waller is not really there. And, you know, San Francisco has very, you know, they're very good against tight ends. They, they just are. They're very good against running. I mean, they're very good against basically everything. But, you know... I think that, uh, you know, Waller, I want to see some more from him, but I think Daniel Jones, you know, this didn't do a whole lot. He ends up with 22 for 30, 237 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception. And again, it's another deflected interception. I believe this one was off of Waller. So again, the only really one bad interception that was Jones' fault was one was his second interception versus the Cowboys. That that was bad. You know, the, there was no rushing attack. I mean, Matt Breida had a had a nine yard touchdown, but the Giants, you know, did not run the ball. They they didn't even try. Um, and the Giants, there was just a lot of short game passing. I mean, just for example, Paris Campbell was six for twenty four. Wanda Robinson, who I should have mentioned, Wanda Robinson makes his return. He was four for twenty one. Um, just not a whole lot going on. Their longest completion was Gary Brightwell making an 18-yard sort of catch and run. And even he also had a pretty big drop early in the game that kind of killed the momentum. The Giants' first drive was actually looking pretty solid. Giants early on were looking okay. And then the second quarter, it got away from them. And then there was a spurt in the third quarter. So that, that was it. To me, the first quarter, generally speaking, I thought was all, was all right. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the third quarter, they kind of got back going. But um, And then just on the defensive side... A lot of guys I'm, you know, upset with and feel like there's a lot more to give. Um, one bright spot was Micah McFadden, who, you know, interestingly enough, tackling for him I feel like is a bit of an issue, but he had four tackles for loss. That is that is a lot. Uh, and so he was definitely a bright spot on the defense. Bobby O'Karake, I have not really noticed him in a, much of a positive way. Looked decent in the second half of the Arizona game. But besides that, he was supposed to be a key new piece um, in the middle of that defense, and I just haven't seen it. Xavier McKinney, don't like, I mean, the George Kittle uh, sort of catch, and then he just goes down the sideline. Like, Xavier, you want to maybe tackle him? You want to maybe push him out of bounds? Like, what are you waiting for? Lack of aggression. And the Giants have been getting bullied around. I thought there was another game where they got bullied around. Lord, Leonard Williams made, a, made some plays in this game. He also did have a rough in the passer penalty, but he made some plays. He had a half a sack. Um... Dexter Lawrence, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from him. Kayvon Thibodeau did have a sack, but but you know, again, like I'm very underwhelmed by what I see from Kayvon Thibodeau. I really, really am. So, um, you know, that, that 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 those are the main points. But you know, this starts out with San Francisco getting the ball, and immediately you get a third down conversion. That was the theme here, where where San Francisco was able to pick up key third downs, and the Giants were not. The Giants were three for twelve on the night. Uh, so Debo, and again, when I say night, it, it triggers to me. Giants are just terrible on prime time. Um, just really, really bad. Unfortunately, next week's Monday Night Football versus the Seahawks, and then a couple weeks from there, you're at the Bills on Sunday night. It just, it, it doesn't typically go very well. So you get that first down conversion, uh, third down conversion, the Debo Samuel catch. Um, Christian McCaffrey really could have even done more than he did. He was... He, I mean, whether it be just his talent or having the holes to do so, the run, the rushing attacks on both sides could not be more different. Um, and yeah, third and eight, you get a Jennings 14-yard catch. Um, you know, they end up in the red zone of the Giants. Look, bend but don't break. That did happen a bit here. I mean, they did end up giving up 30 points, and they were not good, but they did make some stops at points. And so Jake Moody settles for a 28-yard field goal. 
And then the Giants respond with a pretty good drive of their own. And the Giants didn't have many drives in the first half, but here, um, kind of methodically go down the field. You get a third down conversion from Wandale, which was good to see. Um, and then, you know, Gary Brightwell with an 18 yard, you know, with nice play by Brightwell, showing off some speed actually. But then the next play, he drops an easy play. And that killed the momentum. And they would not get a first down from there, but Graham Gano who's definitely Mr. Reliable, makes a 44-yard field goal. Uh, and so it ties the game up at three. Then uh, the Giants actually do force a punt. The, the, the uh, San Francisco punts. It's a fourth and two at the 50, and, the, and they punt it away. But they kind of pin the Giants deep, and then that's where, um, at the end of the first quarter, Daniel Jones is sacked, a loss of eight yards to go back to the two. So the Giants started at 10, and like I said, that Bosa play killed that. But then Jamie Gillen with a 60-yard punt to the San Francisco 28 as we go into the second quarter. So, all right, like kind of uh, field position, not bad again. But San Francisco goes down for an 11-play, 72-yard drive. Uh, and some of the big plays were as follows. The real big one, and to me, this was almost the play of the game when I look back on it. Third and 15, San Francisco's at their own 23. Giants kind of have a little bit of little momentum going. And an easy 30-yard, like, screen, you know, just an easy pass to Debo Samuel. And he just, it's a catch and run for 30 yards. Um, and then, later that drive, third and 13, similarly to Christian McCaffrey. Little dump off, and you get a first down. So, like, that's just, you, you cannot let that happen. I'm sorry, you cannot let that happen. And eventually, you get... Um, Another, you know, it's a third and five of the Giant Nine, and you get a, a touchdown from Brock Purdy to Ronnie Bell. Um, so that makes it 10-3 Niners, and the Giants go three and out, and there's a sack in, included in there as well. Uh, Shane Lemieux, so here's the other thing I should have mentioned. Shane Lemieux gets the start at left guard. Mark Lewinsky is completely in the doghouse, where Lemieux has surpassed him. I mean, it is it is crazy. So your alignment was Azudu from left to right. Azudu, Lemieux, Schmitz. McKeithen and Neal. I mean, it, it is bad, basically all the way around. But um, so yeah, the score is 10-3, and then the Niners score again. And, you know, you get a lot of McCaffrey, Ronnie Bell. This might have been the yeah, this might have been I think on this drive was the one where Bell gets the catch, where it's up in the air. And, you know, there were definite near interceptions. I should mention that as well. Whether it be a Dory Jackson in the first quarter, not really fully going for it, and Kittle knocks it away, or Deontay Banks in the end zone before the field goal, where Debo kind of knocks it away. But, like, Purdy was just being kind of honestly reckless against the Blitz, and the Giants could not take advantage of it. They don't have the playmakers to get these turnovers. So, you have a letter Williams roughing the passer, um... But ultimately, it ends up in Christian McCaffrey scoring a touchdown. That's McCaffrey's 12th game, 12th straight game with a touchdown. He has been just incredible with the San Francisco 49ers, a match made in heaven. Uh, and so that makes it 17-3, that McCaffrey touchdown. Give the Giants credit. They do drive for a field goal towards the end of the first half. Darren Waller makes a couple of catches. Darius Slayton with a 17-yard reception. And eventually, Graham Gano, who is just, uh, I mean, a 57-yard field goal with ease. That would have been good for, like, 65. Um, really, really nice kick. And so it's 17-6 at half. Giants start at the half. Um, and... They get a first down. Gary Brightwell has, a, you know, again, a catch and run play, but eventually they do punt. But then San Francisco goes three and out. And the Giants end up with really good field position after a, a penalty on the Niners. So the Giants, it's a couple of plays, 37 yards. Uh, Paris Campbell, a seven yard catch, pass interference where Waller was interfered with. And then Matt Breida with an eight yard touchdown run. Uh, the Giants do go for two, and Jones is taken down. Very, you know, it, it's it doesn't go down as a sack, but he was essentially he was sacked, um, and so um, the score remains 17-12. And then San Francisco gets a field goal, and here, you know, frustratingly enough, you know, first play Debo Samuel of 40 yards, um, and then. You know, they, they, they were just able to to get what they wanted. A big Donnie Holmes defensive holding penalty on a third down where he was, I mean, him versus Debo Samuel is a, is a scary, scary matchup. Um, but like I said, you know, kind of similar to that first drive, 
Uh, and there was a pretty, and there was a legal contact penalty on Kayvon Thibodeau that was like really questionable, but ultimately no harm, no foul as Jake, as they settled for a 21 yard field goal. So, all right. Like, here we are at this point, late in the third quarter, the Giants down eight. So, my point is, is as bad as it all felt and ultimately was, the Giants did kind of hang around. But here, they, they go three and out on this drive, right? And so, you're fucked automatically. Now, San Francisco has a drive that bleeds into the fourth quarter, third into the fourth. And a really big play by George Kittle down the left sideline where I don't know what Xavier McKinney was was really doing. Um, maybe, again, you want to tackle him? I guess not. Giants are not good at tackling. I, I, they they got to be one of the worst teams in football at tackling. And ultimately, it is a moody 36-yard field goal. So now it's 23-12. to 12. The Giants then go three and out again. There was a face mask penalty on Josh Azudu that put him in a tough spot. And, you know, a third and 11 to Darren Waller where Jones, again, the play's got to be made. It was a high throw by Jones, but also Waller could have caught it. So he was open and they don't get it done. So now the Giants punt and then the icing on the cake from the San Francisco 49ers, Debo Samuel, who actually got hurt on the first play, a 19-yard play. He would come back by the end of the drive, ultimately to score a 27-yard touchdown from Brock Purdy. This was Samuel uh, beating Adore Jackson for the touchdown uh, to give the Niners a 30-12 lead. And then that uh, the last Daniel Jones drive of the night ends in an interception that goes off of Darren Waller and the Niners get it. Tyrod Taylor would come in for a series. It would be a quick one. And the Niners win 30-12. to 12. Uh, So, for me, nothing too unexpected. You couldn't have expected to win this game. Beating Arizona, you know, what it did for me was, you know, you kind of understand that you're not going to be able to compete with these top teams. But what you do hope for is that, you know, say Seattle's a team that sh- that is that should be on your level or close to. I would say the Seahawks might be slightly better than the Giants, but not by much. It's very close. And it's a home game Monday night. Like, let's come out with a good performance. Like, that to me is a, an extremely pivotal game to the season. And I'm going to go as far as to say, yeah, I, I, I do think that is going to be a must-win game. And if you win it, it allows just a little bit of breathing room for a couple of tough matchups that happen after that. So... Um, yeah, Thursday Night Football, not a good one for the Giants. They lose to the San Francisco 49ers, 30-12, and their record drops to 1-2. and two. They'll be back on prime time. A little bit of an extended break. They'll be back home at MetLife Stadium to take on the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football.